This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to upgrade and install a processor into an HP Z420 workstation. So the first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com, click on the blog page, and search Z420. You're going to see an option that comes up that says HP Z420 computer and other uh, gaming computer and other upgrades. You want to click on that link and this is crucial before you actually do a processor upgrade on an HP Z420 because the Z420 has two different system boards and each system board will determine which version prox you can install. So we've kind of done the homework for you. Um, we've labeled the system board part numbers and what version processors that they'll support. Uh, we typically pick the high clock speed CPUs. Uh, we give it the step codes. Um, so we do all that, uh, all that homework for you. So this is crucial to check out what system board you have so you know which version processor you can actually install. If you don't go to this page and check this out, um, you may install the wrong version proc and you will not get video. All right, so let's get to the install. Um, before you choose to install a processor in the Z420, you want to update the BIOS with your existing processor first. Um, that's going to give you the latest microcode updates to make sure that everything will work well, assuming that you choose the right version based off your motherboard. So make sure that you update your BIOS before you do any sort of swapping of the processor. Now again, we're, we're, we're really emphasizing verifying the system board part number um, because like, if you don't actually, if you install a V2 processor, into a, a v1 system board or a generation one system board it's just not going to give you video and it's just not idle super high and you're going to be back to your old processor so make sure you verify that before you install an upgraded processor all right so here's our z420 workstation it's a little mini or not a mini tower but it's a tower workstation um, here's our processor and uh, our heat paste that we get from shinet 2 microsci now this is the E5 2637V2 processor. It's a high clock speed, 3.5 gigahertz, gets close to four gigahertz with max turbo frequency. And as you can tell by the V2 processor, we do have the generation two board that supports the V2 processors. All right, so we removed our side panel. Um, this is our heat sink. There's four screws and you'll wanna use a T15 to loosen those screws. There's also a fan connection to the motherboard to give power to that fan. We recommend removing that first before you loosen those T15 screws. So we're going to go ahead and, and basically loosen these. Um, you, you'll keep torquing them to the left and obviously you'll feel them loosen up. We've got two done. This third one's kind of hidden a little bit, but you can see it. Okay, so once we get the last screw, we'll, we're gonna be able to remove the actual heatsink. Now we have the existing processor on the motherboard still. Uh, we did do the BIOS update already before we decided to remove this to make sure it's got the microcode update for our upgraded processor. Um, so let's show you how to remove the old processor. There are two retention clips. You'll wanna do the one on the left first. I guess it depends on the orientation of where you are in the system, but you can see how, how we're doing it. And very gently remove that existing processor. You do not want to touch the pins because if you touch those pins, you're going to damage the, the slot and then you're, you're going to have to get a new motherboard. So don't, do not touch the pins. All right, so here's our replacement processor. We're kind of pointing out these little notches because that's how we're going to line it up in the system board when we install it. All right, so we've got it lined up perfectly. You can kind of do a dry run, uh, hold it over the slot, and just look to make sure that the those little those little um, dimples are lined up properly. So ours is installed properly. As you can see, the little the little notches are filled with the dimples that are from the, on the motherboard. And now we just need to put our retention clips back on. So from our orientation, we're going to do that right retention clip first, and then we will do our other retention clip. You have to do them in the right order, otherwise it will not shut. All right, so now we need to put our heat paste on. Again, we use heat paste from Shinetsu Microsite. It works really, really well. 
And we really only just want like a pen cap right in the middle of the processor because what's going to happen is when we put our heat sink on this, on the CPU, it's going to heat it up and evenly spread that heat paste across the processor to keep it nice and cool. All right, so now we've done that. Here's our heat sink. There's the part number if you need it, 647-287-001. We're going to go ahead and put that right back onto that processor slot. And we've got the four screws that we need to tighten again. And we do need to plug in our processor fan as well. So we're going to, again, use the T15 to tighten those, those, um, those screws. And we typically do this by hand uh, because we have a lot more control when we feel that it's tight. Um, if you use a drill, there's a chance you could snap those screws right off, and that would not be good because then you'd be possibly replacing your system board, um, if, if not just the heat sink. So we recommend tightening by hand just because, like I said, you get more feel. Okay, so now everything's tight. Uh, we just need to put our side panel back on and we're ready to plug our system back in. Now we had Windows 10 installed on this system already. So we're just going to boot right into the device manager. We're going to go to the device manager, right click on start, go to device manager. And we just want to see that that processor is running properly. Now it's a quad core CPU, but it's coming up as eight just because of the threads. Um, so everything is working perfectly. Now, if for some reason you're, you didn't get video when you turned your system on, one of two things happened. You either didn't have the right system board um, to run the version proc you had, or you didn't update the BIOS so you don't have a microcode update. So definitely go to greenpcgamers.com, follow the processor guide there, and make sure that you're installing the right processor. And if you do, you're going to end up like us. You're going to go into the device manager, and you're going to have your upgraded CPU, and everything's going to be awesome. If you have any questions, please uh, make sure and comment below. If this video was helpful to you, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, um, we do monthly giveaways on our Facebook page, which is greenpcgamers.com. Um, all you have to do is like the page, and, we, uh, and you will qualify for those monthly giveaways. Thank you so much for watching.